decided that we wanted to have gardens at Michilimackinac because it's part of the 18th century life here. The gardens weren't a huge part of their life, but nevertheless, they were still here. They provided fresh vegetables, they provided flavoring for their food. The gardens also, in some cases, provided medicines. For our site today, we've chosen to base the gardens on archaeology work and we actually do find seeds here when we're excavating so we know that they're consuming or growing things like beans and we're also finding that they were eating squash so things like that we can choose to put in our gardens to replace the sand on our site. We grow a variety of things. There's not just a vegetable garden in the 1770s. There's also flowers, herbs, fruits, all sorts of things mixed in. And their backyards had to also serve as space for storing firewood, for keeping chickens, for, um, for doing laundry. So the backyard spaces were certainly for gardens, but they were also for household use. It's a lot like a modern backyard. We use the gardens as teaching tools um, to teach people both about their food and where it's coming from, how it grows. It's pretty special to see a kid able to pull up a carrot or to pull up a radish and then most of them are pretty brave and they brush the dirt off and eat it before mom can say anything. But <laughs> gardens are very seasonal so depending on when you come in we might have one vegetable growing and the next month it will be out and there will be a different vegetable growing so that we can use that same space for two different things because they are, the gardens are so small. So we'll try as much as we can to get kids or even adults involved in helping us in the gardens. When folks are put into a different situation, I think it becomes novel. Um, and for that short time period, even if it is novel, they're learning a lot because it's something special. 